this video, we're discussing summation notation, which is a common notation that turns up in formulas in this course. So let's first talk about um, just the general idea of summation and how we express it in mathematics. So we're going to use this symbol. It's the capital sigma. Now, you've seen lowercase sigma in the course probably already. Lowercase sigma represents standard deviation. If you haven't seen that yet, you will see this and know that it's called sigma, which represents, some, which represents a standard deviation. But the capital version of that letter, Greek letter, sigma, this capital letter that you see on a lot of sorority and fraternity t-shirts, sigma here means to sum in mathematics. So this is going to lead us to the idea that we should add. So when I see sigma, I want to think in my head, I need to add something up. OK, good. Now. From there, what I want to do is to look at the notation with a little more detail. If it says summation of x, it means add up the x values. Add up the x values. So that's what you would think if you see the summation of x. Add up the x values. Now, you might notice like in problems like this, you see little subscript here. i, i, and then you have these numbers. And what does that mean? Well, that's actually not so bad either. So this implies add up the x values, right? Add up these guys. But if I want to be more specific, I can say something like start with the first. So this is the index, and it means start with the first value. So this has little subscripts representing the particular x value you're talking about. So start with the first x value and go up to, say, the nth x value. So let's talk about what this means. Now, we would call these guys x values, for example. And if we did that using this notation, we would say this is like x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4. And what that just means is that this is the first x value, this is the second x value, this is the third x value, that's the fourth x value. That's all it means. That's all we're talking about. So here, when it says i equals 1 to n, it doesn't mean the number 1. It means the first x value you have. And you're going to add that to all the, add all the x values up from the first x value you have all the way up to the nth x value. Now, in statistics, n would mean all the values because we use n to represent our sample size. So in algebra, n is just n, right? It just means the nth x value. But in statistics, n means the sample size. So we'll generally be saying from 1 to n means add up all the x values. Sometimes people don't even bother to write the subscripts here because they would just write it like this. If they want you to add up all the x values, they would generally just do it like this. That just means add up all the x values you have. OK, good. So once we know that, then we can start to figure out these expressions. Let's start with the first one, which is pretty easy. This one says to sum up the x values from the first to the fourth x value you have. Well, that means to add 4 to negative 5 to 3 to 9. Add those up. That's what it's asking us to do. So if we do that, we say 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And 2 plus 9 is 11. If we wanted to be careful to check that, we could add up the positive numbers, for example, first. I could say, well, 4 and 3 make 7, plus 9 makes 16. 16 take away 5 is 11. Remember, if you're adding, you can do addition in any order. It doesn't actually matter. All right, let's look at this next expression. It's a little more complicated. In order to figure out these last two expressions, and any time we have a complicated expression involving a summation symbol, it's best to think of order of operations. Do you remember that from earlier training that you would have had in mathematics? Yeah, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You've seen that written out that way before? Maybe you haven't seen it written this way. A lot of people write it all in one line. I don't agree with that because then it implies that maybe multiplication comes before division. That's not true, right? There are four unique orders of operations here. So parentheses goes first, then exponents, then multiplication and division. There's no preference between those. You just do them as you see them, working left to right, starting with uh, whatever appears first, right? If multiplication turns up first, you do that first, then you do the next part of the problem, and et cetera, et cetera, right? And addition and subtraction, same thing. There's no preference between them, but you would do them in the order that you see them. So if you see subtraction first, you'd work that out first sometimes, right? OK. Now, bottom line is, though, is that with this order of operations, we can figure out how to evaluate things like this and this. Because when I look at this, it say, well, it involves a couple of things, right? We have summation, we have a parentheses, and we have exponents. 
Well, parentheses goes first. Parentheses tells us to do whatever's inside the parentheses before doing anything else. Okay, so let's do what's inside the parentheses first. Inside the parentheses is an addition problem, right? That addition problem has already been solved for us because this part inside the parentheses is the same as this part here. So I can see that from you know, adding up all the x values from the first to the fourth value is going to be the same answer we got there, which was 11. So we'll basically have 11 here, quantity squared. And of course, 11 squared is 121. And that's it. That's all we have to do. So it's actually really nice to follow order of operations here so we know which one goes first. Inside first, then squared because of the parentheses. Now how about this problem? It doesn't have any parentheses, right? So the only, order of, only operations we have dealing with here is exponents and addition. And between exponents and addition, which one goes first? Well, we do exponents first, right? So that means we're going to have to square all the x values. Each x value must be squared first. And only after that will we add them up, right? All right, so let's square all the x values and see what we get. If we square 4, we get 16, right? We square 5, negative 5. Remember, squaring a negative number gives you a positive result because negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Two negatives multiplied give you a positive. So we end up with a positive. 3 squared is 9, and 9 squared is 81. All right, then we're supposed to add them up to finish this problem, right? So basically I have to do 16 plus 25 plus 9 plus 81. Well, these two make 90, right? That makes 90. And this makes what? 141, correct? So together we have a total of 131. So the answer for this one is 131. You can use a calculator to add these up if you want, that's fine. All that matters though is that you square each of the values first, square every value, from the first value to the fourth value in your list, and then add them up and you'll get the answer 131. And that's basically an overview of summation notation. If the problem is more complicated, you can still rely on this order of operations to help you figure out what you should do first. Real quick before we leave this, let's just look at a very quick complicated formula or expression and you tell me what you would have to do. Well, if I have the summation of x minus 3 quantity squared from the first value to the nth value, what do I do here? Well, I have some subtraction here, I've got some addition, I've got a parentheses, I've got exponents, right? Well, to answer the problem, what we have to do is just follow order of operations. What's inside the parentheses gets done first. So I'll have to do, for every x value I have, and I should say i at the bottom, for every x value I have, I would subtract off 3 from each of them, right? So for example, if I was working with this set, I would subtract 3 from every one of those numbers first. When I'm done with that, I would square because, again, exponents would go next before I do the addition. So then I would square all the results I got from subtracting 3. So first I'd subtract 3 from everything, then I'd square all those answers, and when I was done squaring, finally I would add them up. So again, order of operations will walk you through and tell you what you should do, no matter how complicated this expression is.